Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I, I am, I'm so grateful uh, to be a recipient of this award and to be keeping such extraordinary company. Uh, I, I first of all want to thank uh, all of you who are involved in making this possible, but the main thing that I want to do here is to just say how I'm inspired by the young people who are represented here, uh, because I think that's the purpose uh, ultimately of this foundation. And I want to tell just a brief story because Archbishop uh, Tutu is here, uh, one of my heroes, uh, and let you know where I was when I was about your age. Uh, I'm really dating myself now, uh, although I'm also dating the Archbishop, because uh, back in 1979, uh, I was a freshman in college at Occidental College in California. And I had had a somewhat rocky uh, uh, youth and, and uh, teenage years. My father wasn't at home. Uh, I uh, was growing up uh, partly with my grandparents in high school. Uh, I'd gotten into trouble occasionally. It was what my mother called a good time Charlie, uh, meaning I wasn't really serious in terms of my studies, in terms of my work. Had some awareness of the world around me, had some sense of injustice and uh, unfairness, but it wasn't uh, finely honed, it wasn't well developed. And I remember in 1979, arriving as a freshman and doing what freshmen do, uh, you know, trying to figure out what courses are and trying to uh, change your study habits and trying to identify that food in the cafeteria, what it is. And, uh, and we were visited on campus by uh, a couple of gentlemen from South Africa who were representatives of the ANC in 1979-1980. And they spoke about their efforts to overcome apartheid. And for about an hour, uh, myself and a group of students uh, listened uh, to these young men who were not much older than we were. Uh, describe the extraordinary struggles they were going through, uh, the sacrifices that were being made. Uh, people who were enduring jail and torture and beatings uh, because they had a sense that uh, somehow, uh, some way, uh, justice would prevail. And that, that brief meeting, I think, in some ways changed my life because what it told me, first of all, was that ordinary people can do extraordinary things when they're given an opportunity. Uh, we sometimes think that our leaders have to be, have fancy degrees or well-educated or some public office somewhere. Uh, these young men had not, none of those things. Uh, but what they possessed was uh, a anger over injustice that they were able to channel in a constructive, positive way. And I thought to myself uh, that they gave me some sense of the direction that my life uh, might go. And so I became active in the anti-apartheid movement on uh, campuses. And I'm not sure we were particularly effective. As I recall, Occidental College uh, continued to refuse to divest uh, despite the various protests that we organized as students. I transferred to Columbia and there was similar resistance on Columbia's campus. But over time, I like to think that I was part of that mosaic that applied pressure and ultimately helped those in South Africa achieve the extraordinary liberation uh, that I would witness uh, almost 10 years later uh, in uh, as, a, uh, as a law student. And I remember the image of Nelson Mandela walking out of prison uh, and understanding that a seminal moment in history had occurred uh, and that Mandela's long march towards freedom was not his alone, but was part of thousands of footsteps, of millions of footsteps of people all around the world. And I trace back me getting involved in politics to that moment because I, as a consequence of that organizing on a college campus, I became a community organizer. As a consequence of a community organizer, I, after going back to law school, became a civil rights attorney. As a consequence of being a civil rights attorney, uh, I entered the state legislature and I now stand before you as a United States Senator and as a candidate for president. Uh, and so th the primary message I guess I have uh, in, in receiving this award is that uh, all of you 
uh, represent enormous potential and enormous possibility for change because we all know that injustice still exists. It exists, uh, it exists here in the United States, uh, in every poor neighborhood, in any, every inner city, in every rural community all across the country. Uh, there is quiet desperation. Uh, young people's lives are filled with sadness and desperation and anarchy and chaos. Uh, and obviously all around the world, uh, we see uh, those same uh, symptoms of hopelessness uh, made manifest uh, in places like Darfur, in places uh, like the Middle East, uh, in places that too often are forgotten about and not written about until they flare up in uh, tragedy. So I hope that all of you who are uh, on the brink of doing extraordinary things uh, decide to channel that talent and that energy uh, and that imagination uh, to figuring out how do you uh, move the process along for a better history? You know, how do you put your shoulder against the wheel and move that boulder up the hill? Uh, and I'm absolutely confident that if all of you take up that challenge, uh, the world is waiting for you, ready to be changed. Uh, because I think we live in this moment in history right now where uh, the, the, the hunger for change, the hunger for something new, the desire to break out of the ordinary, the self-interested, the petty, the trivial uh, is, is everywhere. And uh, they're waiting for you. Uh, and so I hope uh, that as you see the recipients of this award, uh, you recognize that uh, it, it's actually more of a, a tool to give you a little spark uh, and drive you uh, in the wonderful directions that I hope your lives take uh, in the years to come. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.